Greetings and welcome back to Victoria 3. This is the second episode of our run in Ethiopia, in the Horn of Africa. We managed in the first episode of this run to form the Empire of Ethiopia from uh, one state at the beginning of the game, the state of Shewa. And uh, we will continue from here. We managed to basically went up the ranks significantly, I would say. Um, we have some problem because we have to increase our taxation capacity and of course we also have to work on the expensive government goods like paper but generally speaking I would say that the progression was at this point kind of smooth also it would be nice maybe later on to include Gojam to our territory Gojam Gojam I don't know how to pronounce this sorry if I don't pronounce it correctly but yeah it will be nice because they have uh, a significant amount of gdp and also of population and a very good literacy it's even higher than ours probably it will be preferable to just focus on the development of our land right now and then once we will see the opportunity for expansion we will do it or we could simply disregard the invasion of the other territory and just focus on colonialism in uh, a later phase of the game and we also discovered the centralization, which uh, should already contribute to the taxation, but we still have a minus six in terms of taxation capacity. Let's go also for the central archives. This will take, of course, longer time. Wow, 11 years. That's way too long. Well, let's rather focus then maybe on international relations. I'm not really sure if it's worth at this point. Hmm. Let's try. And then to reduce the problem with the taxation capacity, we might need to build another government administration building. It's, it's quite a waste to build one government administration building for just six points, but let's do it. Who deserve the credit? Recent investment in Ethiopia and Amhara towards our millet farms has brought into question who should get the credit for the boost in investment. Let's take a look. Let's try to balance a little bit the thing here. So we have landowners with a plus 10, the church with a plus 5, and the rural folk with a minus 8. So definitely I do not want to piss off the rural folk further, I believe. They already give me a minus 10% of technology spread because of the relationship that we have with them. Let's go with the farmer, deserve the credits. And I was thinking that it might be interesting to maybe annex Geledi because um, they have quite an important amount of um, iron mines. This is a problem. We built the second government administration building and still we have this ah, okay now it's minus zero okay maybe it's disappearing can you please go away just for one point okay but maybe for just one point we can live with this um we will see okay let's do the following let's decrease the relationship with geledi and also we expel their diplomats should we really manage to start a diplomatic play against geledi and then uh, annex them to our territory this will not only give us access to important iron mines but also to the cost so we will be no longer landlocked which can be good and bad at the same time of course we will be more exposed to naval incursion in case of war but uh, yeah it might also open up new opportunities okay and it seems that now we damage enough the relationship with geledi to start a diplomatic play against them. Confirm conquer state Geledi. Very good. And let's see how things develop. For the moment we share only one border with them. To make sure to use all our armies I will also recruit a second general. And wow this is wounded. I don't like it. But it has nice boost but on the other hand it also brings devastation. Mm. I'm not too happy to support the rural folk, but let's go with uh, Girma or Girma Vossen. So they are asking war reparation. Begendear, they also want to join this war. We do not share any border with them. I'm fine with this. It's the second time that this country move against me. They must have something personal against me. 
Ah, unfortunately, they get the support also of Tigray. Also with Tigray, we do not share any borders, so I do not have any concern for the moment. And the Bejem there has started to damage our mutual relationship. Actually, I will do one thing. Begin improving relationship, <laughs> paradoxically, and the same with Tigray. I don't care that they want to move against me. I want to maintain good relationship in the area. And we should be able to carry the war against Galedi without particular issues, I can imagine, considering that their allies will not really be able to join the war. And they cannot sway anyone else at this point. If I will succeed, that will be very good, because in the first episode of this run, basically we managed to win our first war and form Ethiopia, and in the second then we will manage to extend further our territories and get access to interesting iron mines. So let's see, fingers crossed. And I think it will not take too long this war, honestly, because we are easily penetrating their territories and they're only ally. They don't have the possibility to attack my front. So it's kind of good. International relationships unlocked. Um, and at this point, rather than going on colonialism, which I could already do, maybe it will be better to focus on mandatory service to be able to then create a national militia and look at these numbers, how the war score is dropping for our opponents, dropping rapidly. We just have to wait, it's a matter of time before they declare that they capitulate and here they are they capitulate and as you can see our territory expanded significantly and now what we will need to do is to propose a peace deal for the other opponents who are joining our enemy because we will never have the possibility anyway to fight each other so better like this First of all, we have low market access in the Ethiopian Somaliland and uh, this is something that we can solve, for example, apart from the fact that we need to incorporate the state. If we go for road maintenance, would that help? States in turmoil, so we also need to go for violent suppression here. I mean, market access is still at 75%, of course, it's not ideal. I should build a port probably to increase the market access. Then what I would also like to do is to start using their resources. Let's see if it is true that they have a good potential in this country when it comes to iron mines. Maybe we can also issue a decree here and promote a resource industry. Stock exchange unlocked. Does this help us? Not really, because we are still isolationist and there is no chance in the near future to change these policies. The market access is still uh, not at 100% now that we even managed to build a port in the newly conquered state. And look how nice our capital looks like. I, I really like what they did in Victoria 3 with the map. The map looks fantastic, to be honest. And here we have our first port. And there is another event, it's me or them. Ama Cerecha, or Cereka, I don't know, leader of the ruling landowners, has had enough of compromising with his coalition partners. He has demanded that either his collaborators follow his order or landowners will never approve of their changes. Okay, this is not nice at all. Um, let me take a look again at our government. Right now the armed forces have zero. Landowners plus four. Landowners, we have lost a lot of support of landowners lately. What a ridiculous thing to say. They will go to plus three. And now that we have mandatory service unlocked, we might be able maybe to pass the law for the 
National Militia? Not really. Maybe if I get rid of the church from the government, confirm we get 100% of legitimacy. Still not big progresses for the National Militia. Ah, because this is desired by industrialists, rural folk and trade unions, okay. If I will bring, I mean, it's never going to work, but if I will bring this, well, 81% of legitimacy. Let's try. Because this has a little bit more cloud than professional army. The reason why I'm going here is just because of that. Let's try to enact the national militia. And then for the next research, we are going to focus on colonization. I'm not sure if we will really be able to move in this direction because unfortunately we will need to pass also the corresponding law and also there I see prog problems with that, especially with the rural folk in the government. But let's research the technology in the meantime, that doesn't hurt. And in all of this, we managed to complete the first iron mines. But we have the problem that these iron mines, they are lacking what? Shortages of tool. This is something that I did not consider when I started creating the iron mines, that they also consume tools and we don't have any industry for tool. Uh, which is the reason why this is still completely inefficient right now. So we have to prioritize absolutely the tools at this point, which will require even more wood and the wood is already needed right now. So that's, that's all interconnected. So let's still first complete the logging camps because we need wood anyway. Now wood is becoming way too expensive. But then after the logging camp, we can start building the first tooling workshops and this should help the iron mines. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's obvious that you need to have the tools for mining. <laughs> I created the mines and I did not provide the tools for start actually mining. Very smart. And unfortunately, we were not able to enact the national militia. What was meant as a routine speech about the merits of national militia by Haley Vossen has quickly developed into a public relation disaster for the rural folk. He lose pop attraction and popularity and still the enactment success is minus 10%. And honestly, I don't care that much about the rural folk, to be fully honest. The only reason why I was bringing them to the government is to pass basically this law. They still have sufficient clout, but they are, they are very loyal, plus 10%. On the other hand, they are also part of the problem. They're, they're, they are the reason why we are isolationist. Let's go for the second option. I'm sorry. It's me or them. Let's see. Amcha Kerecha leader of the ruling landowners. This is the same event of uh, some time ago. Uh, we cannot afford to lose their support because they are the leading force. So very well, landowners shall be the leading force. Atmospheric engine and railway are going to be the next discoveries. Yeah, we need to focus a little bit on production and increase the infrastructure because right now that is the problem, I think. At least they're the priority. It should be the priority. Because even if we manage to build uh, these uh, iron mines, but then if we have the market access that remains this low, it's not efficient at all. So there is no other way. We definitely need to take care of building railways and we don't have several technologies that are needed for that. So as soon as we complete the colonization, we will move to the production and start collecting the missing point. The good, the good aspect is that we are also slowly unlocking the cotton gene, which will then take to late or late. I don't know how to pronounce this. And then uh, from there, we will move to mechanical tools and railways. But also the atmospheric engine, it will take four years. Wow, so long. Such a long time before we will be able to actually have railways. 
The vote scandal. It has been revealed that uh, Girma Solomon of the Oriental Orthodox Church has been having a secret affair with a member of the clergy. His resignation is being demanded. So we could uh, decrease his popularity or say ignore it and decrease his popularity only of 25 points. Let's go. Colonization unlocked, but of course this does not mean that now we will have the chance to colonize because unfortunately we do not have the law yet and it will be very difficult to pass because I can see that there is no cloud around it. On the other hand, colonial resettlement is supported by armed force and goes against industries and rural folk. Unforced uh, support also this one and this is also against rural folk and industrialist Let's try with colonial resettlement And now that we have the possibility to unlock some other technology as I was saying, let's move to production Let's maybe go with the cotton gin first. Yeah, at least we solved the tooling issue And we are building the second iron mines The problem is that we still have poor infrastructure, so I'm not really sure how successful those iron mines are. Productivity is poor. Employment is terrible. Actually, I don't think that we should focus on uh, building the second iron mines. This is not the priority. So let's go with the textile to take down the cost of uh, clothing. Cotton plantation also might be needed, but first prioritize the millet farms. Something like this. The ethics of exploitation. The government's attempt to pass the colonial resettlement law has brought uh, uh, the ethics of colonialism to the forefront of the public debate. I can say that we can concede to some of their points and in this way we have 50% of chances of getting plus 10% enactment success chance. This will bring us to 18%. Let's go with this. Okay, went, went well. Now we have 18% of chances of passing the law, but of course it will take 220 days before the next checkpoint. I will end the episode here. I am uh, also in this case satisfied with the progresses we made until this point. Of course, there are some uh, underlying issue related to the infrastructure of our territory, but generally speaking, I am satisfied with the expansion we managed to complete in the course of this episode because it unlocked potentially some opportunities with the iron mines uh, here uh, on the coast of Somalia. I hope it will help to industrialize further the country, but this is something that we can uh, take care of only after having improved a little bit more the internal infrastructure of uh, Ethiopia. So there are still several steps to complete before we can really try to go into that direction. And in the meantime, in parallel, we can also try to get the law for the colonial resettlement approved now that we have the colonialism um, technology discovered. Should that be the case, that could open up the opportunity for further expansion of our territories without uh, necessarily having to use the war. Only time will tell how this adventure in Ethiopia will continue. I hope to see you in the next episode of this series. For the moment, on the other hand, that's all. So, cheers, guys!